So today we're out in the uh, kind of prairie areas of Montana and I saw this scene. I was just kind of captivated by the arrangement of it. So I thought, eh, let's do a small study. <clears throat> still uh, somewhat early in the morning not terribly early probably around eight o'clock or something like that it's supposed to get to uh, 100 degrees today so I thought I would come out and try to get a painting done somewhat early before it really heats up here By the way, if you're uh, new to my channel, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, give me a like too. Keeps the algorithms all happy and cheerful and content. Keeping this painting pretty small, um, when I go on these painting trips, I tend to paint small. I tend to paint plenter paint smaller, period. But um, especially on these trips, I um, like to try to keep it small because I can get them done faster, which is the most important reason. And I want to try to get as many done as possible while I'm here. They're easier to carry. And that's that's about it. So we're just uh, starting in with the um, just kind of scrubbing in some basic uh, values and colors in the foreground trying to get things started and I'm trying uh, a couple new colors today let me go over my colors really quick titanium white um, nickel yellow this is um, cadmium chartreuse I've been experimenting a little bit with it and um, it's a more intense green yellow. This is a cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, not much of that left. Um, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, um, alizarin permanent, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean, viridian, and this is a uh, new one. This is green gold, new one for me anyway. Um, never used green gold before, so we're gonna check that out and see what it's like. In fact, we're going to use a little bit right now. And green gold, it's a very, um, it's a very warm gold, or very warm uh, green. And I'm mixing that right now with the cadmium uh, chartreuse and it is giving me a nice intense um, color here Gonna scrub that with a palette knife just a bit. I think I have to go even lighter. I wanna capture the value difference between here and here. So let's take some more of that chartreuse and a little bit of the green gold.
a lot of times I have um, chromium green oxide on my palette. That's kind of my warmer, earthier green. But um, I left it off for now. We'll see if I need to run back to it screaming. Grab a little bit of that green gold just to slightly warm up these uh, somewhat distant darks. That works pretty good. Not sure you can hear, but there's this incredibly beautiful sounding bird that's singing around me. I grew up in rural Minnesota and I grew up around wetlands and prairies and a lot of people don't think of um, um, prairies and that as something worthy of painting. There's um, a very subtle beauty about them that I think people are missing. I'm going to grab one more color here. I'm going to grab um, Portland Gray Warm or Warm Gray by Gamblin. I like using that when I'm out playing or painting. It's a um, nice subtle color that kind of pushes things back. And it almost, it's like instant atmosphere. If you never uh, tried it, I recommend it. It's uh, very nice for, for plein air painting, especially mountains and things like that. I don't really use it in the studio much just because in the studio I have time to uh, mix the colors that I want to get. But um, I do like to use it out in the field. Just because it uh, gets me there quicker. And it's all about uh, speed. Not all about speed, but uh, speed is definitely important. Yeah, I think that valley is a little too dark. Okay, next thing I should probably try to get is uh, this area right here. It's been very, very dry here. They're, they're just basically begging for rain out here. I 
and the uh, 4th of July is just right around the corner. You're probably watching this quite a ways down the road. But, um, with the 4th right around the corner, I'm sure it's going to, uh, hopefully they don't have any more wildfires at start. I know they've been dealing with that somewhat. Okay, I'm just going to get an approximate in here. Okay, as we go down into this um, valley area right here, it's just a small part of it, the tone gets a little duller, a little, little darker, a little greener. So basically just trying to uh, mix this very ambiguous uh, color that I'm seeing there. And there's a lot of little colors in there. Little streaks of green and you know you can see like almost a, a magenta-ish tone and that. The thing is that squint your eyes though at it first and try to come up with basically just an approximate tone. And then compare the difference between this and this and this and that. And you have, if you have the overall difference between them, you know, then you're, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Constantly squint at the scene. That will also help. So now I have to figure out this um, background hill here. And I want that to feel even further away than this does. So I'm going to be cooling that off 
and I'm adding some Viridian. There is still some warm, some ochres in there, but I want to make sure that, you know, once again, I'm squinting at the whole scene. That's probably a little too light in value. So squint at the whole thing and, um, you know, the whole, the whole scene when you look at it. And then go back and, you know, mix an approximate. And when you have that in there, when you have an approximate mix, sorry, I can't talk today. Um, add a stroke with your brush and see what happens. And then judge it and say, okay, is it, uh, first of all, too light, too dark, too warm, too cool. This is a nice road. I'm actually along a paved road, but it's um, very quiet. I have had hardly any traffic go by. Just the moment I say that, five cars will go by. Okay, the part that I really wanted to get was these highlights up in these hills. And I want to get them before the sun shifts too much. The sun is constantly moving and certain parts of your scene can change just like that. And when you're doing these highlights up here, this is where it gets really important to squint because if you look at the hills alone and you don't squint at your whole scene, what's gonna happen is you're gonna make paint these highlights up in these hills really a lot brighter than what you should. And it, they're not going to feel like they're farther far away than like they're further away than um, this area here So make sure you squint Every single time you look up when you're judging these um, 
these kinds of things. Nice thing about squinting is that it automatically simplifies the scene for you. <clears throat> so you don't feel this obsessive pressure to capture every single detail in there. Basically, if you can capture the illusion of depth, I actually have a video about that from a painting I did back east. Um, but if you can capture the illusion of depth and distance, then, uh, you know, mission accomplished, really. Now there are some areas there's a little more highlight up in these hills. To be careful though that I don't go that I don't go overboard with those. There's some um, evergreen trees, not sure if they're spruces or what. They grow all over the place here that are in the distance. I want to get some of those in. And I'm just treating them as a, as, a, as a color shape, a color and value shape right now. A lot of people would be tempted to go in and try to paint each individual one. I used to do that too, but um, no need to do that. Now that I'm painting this small. Just squint at it and just treat them as a uh, little shapes of a uh, color. And it's really important to focus on the um, the overall um, pattern that the shape is creating on these hills. 
So like to come down just a little bit like this in those spots, you might have another part come down like that. And what that's gonna do is that's going to um, kind of help emphasize the, the form of the hills. Notice how I was using a bigger brush for most of that. <clears throat> I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. But um, the bigger brush kind of forces you to uh, feel out and see the whole thing rather than just these individual parts. There's a slight highlight on some of these trees. I'm just going to give a little indication of them. To give a slight bit of dimension to this. Okay, so with that in there, um, those darks, I'm going to play around a little bit with the highlights on these hills. See, if I need to push that back, you need to push lighter valued things back. I could tell you that Gamlin's Portland Gray is very cool for that. I'm, like I said, I'm not into uh, gimmicks and tricks because um, once you start to rely on a gimmick or a trick, nature, you'll come across something in nature that'll completely throw you off. I mean, unless you paint the same thing all the time in the same lighting. But there'll be some lighting scenario that'll come up that'll throw it for a loop. But um, this Portland Gray can do some pretty amazing stuff with lighter valued um, colors if you want to push a lighter value color back. It really does a nice job. Does not work so well for pushing back darker valued colors because it's it's a higher keyed color in and of itself. 
and so if you try to push back a darker value it's um, probably going to lighten it too much for you. Just a uh, fair warning. Alright, now these um, middle ground trees, they have a uh, bit of highlight on them. Mixing the Viridian. Tried the gold green with it. It's not bad. I think I need to add a little bit of ochre and a touch of alizarin. We'll see. Um, actually, we need to go a little bit brighter and cooler. By the way, if you're uh, interested in supporting my channel, I have a uh, Patreon account set up. If you uh, become a uh, Patreon supporter to help me with all the extra expenses that go along with this, extra brushes, camera cards, photography equipment, um, video editing software, a lot of stuff I learned, <laughs> a lot of extra stuff I learned that you have to uh, put into this that I never foresaw when I started. Extra camera batteries, the camera batteries last about an hour, so I had to buy a <clears throat> couple extras for, uh, for this trip in particular. Because when I'm out and about painting all day, I can't... Uh, you can recharge your batteries in the car, but that only works so well. But anyway, um, I have a Patreon account, and if you do become a supporter, as a thank you, I will be giving away one of my field sketches that you see me do uh, once a month in a drawing. So you uh, will be entered into a chance to win one of my sketches. The, they'll be unframed. Um, but you can frame them. It's just a little extra way of saying thank you to my supporters. And they help me uh, continue making these videos. There is ad revenue, um, but Google does not pay much on the ad revenue, at least not where I'm at right now. Honestly, with the amount of viewers I'm getting right now. Now, if you're watching this five years from now, it might be totally different, but <clears throat> right now it's like the uh, ad revenue might buy a tank of gas or two tanks of gas a month to get out and uh, do this, and that's about it. So, So if you do support me, awesome. Thank you very much in advance. I truly appreciate it. I'll send you an email of thanks, a personal email, not some uh, computer bot generated email. And uh, you'll be entered in, we'll do a live drawing once a month. And maybe you'll win one of my sketches here. Okay, the highlights on these um, trees, you know, when I look at them, I have to say they look 
even brighter and cooler than what I made them here. But I don't know if I want to go quite to that extent because I just have a feeling that if I paint them exactly how I'm seeing them, it's just not going to look good. We'll see. I'm going to sneak up on it. It's not too bad, but I don't want them to be totally distracting. Okay, time to work on this hill here. Uh, green gold um, yellow ochre and white actually do a nice job of replicating some of these uh, kind of unusual yellows that I'm seeing out here gonna throw in a touch of Viridian because in some spots it might be too much Plus I need to go a little bit darker and cooler. See, that's what mastering color is all about. It's just looking at your scene, getting an approximate putting that down, then analyzing it and saying, you know, is that too warm, too cool, too light, too dark compared to what's next to it. And that's the most important part. A color on its own does not mean anything. It's what it's next to that and what it's surrounded by that gives it, you know, all of its characteristics. I've done paintings with my uh, students on, on my uh, online classes I teach. Teach, by the way, there's information about that below. Um, and, you know, I have to emphasize to them that it's not about matching an exact color. It's about making sure that the relationships in your painting are correct. And here's a perfect example. So I'm sitting here trying to capture the intensity of how light this is. But what I failed to recognize until just now, and I'm gonna have to shift everything over a bit, I think, to make this work, is um, I'm subconsciously comparing this highlight to um, these dark trees that are down here in the valley. And I just couldn't get, and see, after even after years of painting, I still make these mistakes. Um, I, st I couldn't get the highlight to jump out without making it look obnoxious. And that's just because there is all this um, dark green down here. So I need to get these trees in, these dark green trees, in order to make this look correct. Now, I will say that compositionally, you probably wouldn't want to do this where I'm having, um, you know, this here and then this here and then this thing smack dab in the middle. But this is more, I'm not trying to win any awards with this painting. This is more for um, my own reference on the colors of the prairie so that when I get back, to where I'm not by the prairie, I can um, have these notations. So I'm really 
this is really just more about taking notes than trying to create an incredible painting and I recommend that a lot especially if you're newer to plein air painting I'm wearing sandals today and I can feel the sun just burning on my feet even though it's still morning. I was up in the mountains um, earlier this week painting and I put sunscreen on but I didn't reapply it as often as I should and I didn't put it on my neck and so my neck was all red so I guess I'm technically a redneck now. That was a joke, by the way. Okay, so now with these trees more in place, I can start to uh, give a little better uh, judgment to this hill. And it's something to look out for when you're painting. If you just can't get something, it's just driving you crazy. And no matter how hard you try, you just can't get a certain color to look right. Um, stop for a moment, look at what's around, around it, around it, sorry, I can't talk today. Um, it might just be that there's something there that you just are not noticing and it might be very slight and subtle, but it's just enough where you don't have that in there. You know, it's not, you can paint all day and readjust that color all day, but it's not going to work just because you know, it's not in the proper relationship.
And when I look out at this um, scene, this is something you should um, always do is don't try to paint things. Just try to see everything as shapes of color. And just paint those shapes of color. And at times don't even worry about the total shape of it, getting a precise shape. Just, uh, you know, get the color notes in there. I mean, I have no idea, you know, what all these little things in here. I mean, they're grasses, obviously, but uh, I'm not trying to paint them exact. I do want to get the feel of the hill coming this way. All right, that is important to me. And um, any other slopes, I, I want to get the structure of the hill down and the form of the hill but not you know a bunch of individual little oh look I got that little plant in there and oh, I got this little um, you know stem or stick or something who cares that you can you can sit there and you might be new and you're thinking okay I'm just gonna go to somebody else's channel I mean I'm that's the whole reason for painting is painting stuff but um, you can think that all you want but I tell you what if you get serious about this reality is gonna come and bite you especially if you're plein air painting and uh, you'll learn the hard way that you can't you know, if you want your stuff to feel real, to look real, you can't just paint stuff. You gotta paint color and value shapes and focus more on the form of the big things rather than the details of the little things. So when this is done, if I can get this hill to feel like it's going this way, I've succeeded way more than if some botanist comes up and goes, oh, I see you got the purple, um, whatever flower thingamabobber in there that's awesome you know now if you're doing a commission for a botanist well that's a different thing i have a theory with commissions where if the client likes it it's good trust me i've had a number of clients that like some really weird ideas and stuff that just look like crap and it was done both in professional, when I used to be a graphic designer, and um, also, you know, just privately and doing paintings for people. I have one guy who wanted me to paint his garden. He had a beautiful garden, but it did not make a good painting. There was no focal plane in it, and there was no, it was, it's kind of like uh, somebody says, you know, can you please paint my hedge? Just my hedge, just paint the hedge of my yard. And, you know, it'd be like the most monotonous thing you could paint. Can I, and they really trim their hedge, you know, got it really perfect. That looks great for a yard, but you go paint that. It's going to be the most boring painting in the world. And this guy wanted me to paint his garden so I gave him my best shot and I focused in on the statue and he didn't like that he wanted me to zoom out so I did and he wasn't happy with the results and it's amazing because there's I've learned with non-artists that there's a disconnect and I think this even happens with artists too I catch myself doing this at times there's a disconnect between visual reality and a mental um, concept you know they'll, they'll they think up an intellectual concept but they don't have the ability to visualize it into something concrete but they get stuck on the mental concept and and they can't let it go and the result is and then they, and then they're paying the bill so they tell you to do this and do that, and the result is something atrocious. But they just couldn't let go of their ego, their mental concept, and um, it 
and let the artist try to do something that looks good versus something that they just think has got to look good because they think it's going to look good even though they have like zero ability to visualize it as an actual painting. that's why it's always good to do uh, studies and um, concept sketches and everything because you know I was talking about this whole thing about having an intellectual concept that isn't visualized and um, sometimes when you actually then visualize it you just like nah that's not gonna work or you really have to make a lot of changes for it to look good and also it's tough to uh, sometimes get down your, you know, it might just be that you might have a great intellectual concept, but it's, it's hard to uh, get it down on paper. There is that too. And I do recommend if you do commissions for people, um, yeah, unless unless you have a really established um, kind of, um, and I don't mean this in any kind of insult, but uh, formula type concept. Like, let's say um, you do dog portraits and you just do them like from the neck up, neck head abstract or just kind of an implied background and that's it and somebody brings you a porch of their little dog and you know in that case you might not need to show them a uh, a thumbnail sketch but anything else I highly recommend showing doing some concept sketches it takes extra time but trust me you will most likely be a lot happier for it. This um, particular commission I was talking about that I did years ago, I tried to show him a uh, a concept of what it was going to look like, and he flat out refused to look at it. He said, nope, I want to be surprised. And boy, he was surprised. Because I, I just was like, thing this thing is not working out the way he wants it to but he just thought I could work magic or something and but you paint long enough you're always gonna have those kind of nightmare scenarios One time a uh, rich lady wanted me to paint her barn. She had a fairly nice barn. And so I pulled up and did a field study of it on location. And there's only one vantage point where I thought the barn looked nice that you could actually see.
and so I did. I think I did. I think I did do a. Um, A concept sketch on this and on this one but it was funny when she looked at it she said well I don't want it from there I, I want it from a different angle I was like okay what angle is that she goes all oh, the angle from my from my living room window well she never invited me in her house to uh, look at it from her living room window so that was the last thing I thought of. So I had to run back out to her place and take a bunch of photos of it from her living room window. And then paint it from her living room window. And she wanted the driveway in, then she didn't want the driveway in, and she wanted the driveway in, and <laughs> it's just like, oh my goodness, please shoot me. So if you do commissions, just beware. You're gonna run into that. And I kind of blame myself for that one. I, I thought, you know, from in the future, I need to ask everything. You know, what angle do you want it from? You will look at thumbnails and approve them or concept sketches. If you do not, I will not do it for you. That's That one will solve a lot of problems right there. Hopefully these people never watch my uh, YouTube videos. That stuff was a long time ago. But I never know if you see somebody screaming at me in the comment section, you know that they were watching. <laughs> oh, I gotta have fun. This um, very extreme foreground here was going like this, but I'm switching it to that. So it's gonna make the composition more interesting. And I'm trying to get him some nice dark greens. There are some darker greens there. I want to get some in just to create a bit of separation between here and here. Okay, so last but not least, we have this um, foreground business, the shrub. I actually know we have the sky. I almost forgot to paint the sky. There's barely any sky in here but there is some. Now in this case, the sky is really not blue. Um, we're still dealing with morning light.
just a sliver of a lizard. I might have got back home and realized I never painted the sky. That would have been really something. It's so bright. It's perfectly sunny out here. Um, I tell you, I came out here for a week, and you're going to see lots of, you probably have seen lots of videos from this trip already. I'm posting them periodically. But, um,. I picked a really good time to come out for painting. Um, it's just been perfectly clear for the last few days, and today is supposed to be the same. It's been insanely hot, but I'm not too concerned about the uh, temperature. I could deal with that. I want clear skies, and boy, am I getting them just no clouds whatsoever it's glorious a lot of times I come out west and I get skunked it'll be um, overcast partly cloudy last fall I came out last September went to Wyoming and um, the weather wasn't bad but the uh, wildfires have pushed smoke all across the country and it really hit out here in the west. Um, I think like half of Oregon was on fire or something like that or Washington State and some of the mountains like the Grand Tetons it's like they were just hazy you could barely see them it was awful. I made the best of it but Coming out west is not cheap. You know, finding a rental home and my family comes with me and rental home, you know, rental car, gas, food, all that stuff. And then I get out here and it's all hazy and everything. And it definitely made a difference paintings did not come out quite as good. But this time I uh, really lucked out. Hit the jackpot. Okay, so sky is in. So now we just have this this shrub. The sun has shifted quite a bit toward the front of it but I'm going to just pretend that hasn't happened and I'm gonna paint paint it more how I remember the Sun being there it's still close enough to how it was before where I can make it work I'm gonna run back into town and get something to eat I'm Right now, just going on water and a uh, boost shake. And that's not quite doing it for me. So I'm doing cadmium yellow light, green gold, and viridian. 
trying that out to see how that works. Pretty good. and lay this down with a pretty gentle hand. I'm not, you know, because I'm doing this wet on wet, I don't want to push real hard in to the paint. The very top, I'm going to get a little bit brighter. By the way, I mentioned uh, really briefly my live online painting classes. Um, I teach them through Zoom. All the sessions are recorded. We do a uh, painting from start to finish, stroke by stroke. I show you, I explain it all. Um, and I'm told by Everybody who takes it that I do a really good job teaching, so I'll just let that stand as it is. But I'm um, very passionate about it. I don't do a whole lot of talking here in my uh, planner videos because I'm kind of under the gun, but in my classes, I really take you in deep and teach you the um, not tricks and formulas and things like that. I mean, well, there are certain formulas that are universal um, um, principles, and you will learn some tricks and things like that, but you have to go beyond that too to become a really good artist. And I am passionate about trying to get that through to my students. Of course, some students, they don't always, you know, you might not be, in, some students might not be interested in that, but a lot of them are, and you, uh, you'll learn a lot. That I uh, promise you. We meet on Saturdays, and we spend four weeks going over painting from start to finish. We also have QA and critique sessions. Everything's recorded, so you can watch it later if you need to, or if you miss the class, you can pick up on it. And I also demo the, the, the painting that we're doing that month on my own from start to finish so that you can watch that and kind of get a feel for how I would just do it. If you, you know, in a traditional um, workshop setting, if you guys are just standing behind me watching. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, I take you through in a very handheld approach during the live sessions, and you also get to watch me demo it on my own. Also, I, I have a reduced, um, membership if you just want to watch me um if you just want to watch my demo piece and that's it where i and i explain with that too i do a lot of explanation with the demo piece um so 
he can do that too. But um, anyway, check it out. We, uh, there's a uh, link below. And that'll take you to the uh, priority list. When a spot becomes open, I let you know. We only open up once a month just because you don't want to come in halfway in the month and the paint is halfway finished. And for the value you get, um, we all, you also get immediate access to all of my past um, sessions, all the past recordings. So you could, in theory, just join, not even show up for a live class, just watch all the past classes. You can do that too, or just join and do the classes and stay a member and just uh, watch all the past ones and do those paintings too. But check it out, love to have you there if you're interested. Taking a badger hair brush here to soften some of these edges. This is not a painting or a subject that I would like enter into a show or or probably even try to sell at a gallery. Um, this is just purely for uh, my note taking and reference. But I thought you'd enjoy coming along for the ride. See me do it. These things are good to do because, um, at least for me, I do a lot of uh, historical Native American work. And this is Crow Country. So could easily uh, see some Crow Indians or even Lakota, you know, riding through here. And I just thought it was an interesting scene, so. But as I said, main thing that I was after was a sense of aerial perspective. This being closer, feeling closer than this, than that, than that, than that, and the sky. And uh, I think I've achieved that. So I think we will call this a painting. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.